Welcome. I'm Brad Miller and here with Jason Medford. And today we're going to get wet. We're going to actually, we're going to talk about water today. <laughs> I think it was a good callback for a previous episode. That's right. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're going to talk about water today. I know a couple episodes ago, we talked about fire uh, and thought today, although we probably should have gone earth first and then we should have gone to air and then fire but we're going to go to uh but that maybe that's a jam with jason episode um but well, instead it, it, we're going to get <laughs> and it really depends on i know i know like when we you can go in any order right i mean if if you want to start north then we should have talked about air first but it uh no no it, air, air we're waiting air is for last air is for last okay but um anyway it uh i think we we talked about fire before Mm -hmm. because it's it's i think an under under considered or underutilized one of the elements and mm -hmm. i know we've talked about the earth is probably what most people are are kind yeah. of thinking about you know with crystals with grounding or earthing um you know so, some mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff that a lot of people are doing things earth related but probably not so much in the other three and so i mm -hmm. that's why i was just feeling like today was today was yeah. water and uh, and Brad brought in a great joke that today we're going to get wet. So again, if you've listened mm -hmm. to other episodes, you know that no, we don't want to get wet, right? Because <laughs> that's that's an analogy of you know everybody jumping into mm -hmm. the the deep end of the pool, and we don't have to. We don't have to get wet too. We can choose to stay dry. But um, right. but water is is wetness, and so it's good to to kind of talk mm -hmm. about talk about water. So let's talk about the. The yeah. element of water a little bit, um, probably a little from a ritualistic standpoint, but also from a practicality standpoint as well, I would think, because water is so important uh, for us. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a component of your body. If something like 70% of your body is made up of water, um, I mean, something similar to about the earth is made up of water as well. Um, and it's it's a vital a necessary component of life as far as we know here at least in our in these bodies and and, and such um it, it's 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 necessary i mean you can only go a few days without water um you know yeah, and, yeah you and, can go for a month or two without food but you can't go without water for more than a few days yeah and so this is it's it's really important obviously if just from a survival standpoint um, but again, just considering the fact that we are majority, primarily water, like our bodies are water. And so obviously water is going to be important. Yep. Yeah. Um, so so you know, if you want to start talking about that a little bit and we'll. Yeah. So where to kind of start, right? Because, you know, like you said, water is something that is vital to our survival. And um, and so there's a lot of things to think about, you know, when it comes to water, because water is an interesting element as well. And so uh, it's it's a great one to understand like the stages of energy as well, because water uh, can be a solid. It can be ice at certain temperatures. At certain temperatures, it turns into water. Liquid. At certain, yep. Liquid. At certain temperatures, then, it turns into steam or air. And at even other temperatures, it turns into plasma, which is very interesting. So there's four phases of water uh, in our physical physics world that we're living in. Uh, plasma being the top one so i didn't realize until just a little while ago that actually water becomes plasma uh, as well and so you know it's it's interesting because it's kind of a basic building block of of us of this physical world that we're in uh but it's also and and when you think about all of the elements together it's how things grow it's how things develop right is we need the sun for warmth but also if you look at things growing in the ground right 
a seed needs the sun, it needs water, it needs earth, it needs air, carbon dioxide, oxygen, other stuff that it needs, the combination of all four of those in order for life to grow as well, right? And so if you only have three of them, no water, guess what? Nothing grows, right? So you have to have some water in there as well. And, and some, some other kind of basic things about, about uh, water that's really interesting is and we won't get too, too far into this necessarily, but, but water is also a great conductor of energy and electricity. In fact, it's one of the best conductors of electricity. Now, some of you might be saying, well, what, what are you talking about? No, electricity goes through like fiber optic cables or copper or other things, right? Well, if you're in the bathtub and you drop a toaster in the bathtub, what happens? <laughs> right? You're, you're a comic strip at that point. You're, you're a comic strip at yeah. that point, right? So, so yes, uh, electricity in water is, is it because it conducts electricity. So if it conducts electricity and it conducts energy... There's a lot deeper uh, uh, reason for us to be well hydrated with good water because it allows the energy in our body to flow as well, right? Just like it, like it flows electricity. And the reality is most people are dehydrated. We, we are not as hydrated as we should be from a water perspective in general. Because we're drinking things like soda and coffee and tea and other things that actually are diuretics that get water out of our system. Uh, and so, and, and if we think about how much water we actually drink, most people don't drink like almost a gallon of water a day. <laughs> it's what we're really supposed to have to be fully hydrated. Um, so, you know, there's probably opportunities from a physical perspective for us to incorporate more water into our lives. But also, you know, water is a component of the food that we eat, of other liquids that we might consume as well. So like soup, right, is is a lot water based. And so that's a way for us uh, to get it as well. But it's... Um, yeah, so one point that I wanted to bring up is just the conductor of energy and why, again, if you want energy, if you want the spiritual energy and the flow of stuff to be going through our body, having more water, having good water in your body that's clean will help the flow of that much better. So not just not just the physical benefits of it, of kind of flushing our bodies, but also the energetic benefit as well of allowing the energy flow. So we could really just quit there and you guys would probably have some really good information that you never do before regarding water um, and reasons why you should be drinking it constantly. Like Jason is drinking, you know, um, there. I am constantly drinking my water bottle for those of you on YouTube. You can see it uh, again. If you're listening, you know, just uh, the podcast, Sorry, you guys, you, you're you missing out. I mean, I don't you, know, you don't tell just you. see us taking taking drinks of our coffee and making funny taking faces. swigs or whatever <laughs> like that. No, but um, yeah, I mean, because I went out hiking this morning, and and so I've been drinking water. I drank water when I was out hiking. I've been drinking water constantly since I've been home to replenish, um, you know, things that I may have lost when I'm hiking and to kind of keep myself hydrated. Um, you know, and, and I kind of and I and I know right now there's a big like. When we were young, at least I remember I would be out and I would play all summer long outside with friends and never worried about water. We never worried about getting thirsty. We'd go, you know, you'd, you'd be at school all day and maybe you hit the drinking fountain or something like that on the way to the bathroom or maybe in the way from recess. But water was never really a big thing. We never really talked about water. Um, you know, you, you would, you know, you played sports water really, you know, yeah, maybe you drink a little bit of water after the game or something, but really it wasn't a big thing, you know I mean? And this is, you know, 30 years ago or something. I, I don't remember water ever really being a big deal. You know, you'd go to the park, you wouldn't think about water. You'd go to, you know, a sporting event and you, you didn't really, you know, you drink, 
soda or something, but you never really thought about water when you were different, doing different things. Now I pretty much everywhere I go, I take this bottle of water with me. Like I go to, I drive in my car. I take the bottle of water in my car and I drink it as I'm driving to car. Um, you know, I go to, you know, events or thing like that. And, you know, where I can, I bring water in with me. Um, and so on the one hand, I think it's good that we are becoming more, um, aware of the importance of water. It's becoming more of a thing. I mean, my daughter actually, uh, brings a bottle of water, like, you know, she fills up with water at school, you know, and they sit there and they have it at their desk and they drink it throughout the day and they can go refill it. And, you know, again, for me, maybe you go to the drinking fountain at, you know, after recess, or if you went to the bathroom, you know, you'd have your, your milk or something at lunch. And that was it. Like you didn't really think about it. You didn't really, you know, drinking hydration wasn't really a deal. Now, you know, they're saying, hey, bring bottles of water to school. And, um, you know, they're giving them water breaks and like, you know, coaching softball. Everybody we have bring water with them. And we have, you know, constant water breaks all the time to keep hydrated. Um, you know, we're just a lot more aware, I think, now of the importance of water. And that's just from a strictly biological taking care of this meat suit sort of reasoning. Like that's just maintaining the body that we're living in right now. That's to say nothing about, like you said, the electrical, uh, you know, energy um, conductivity part aspects of water, for instance, um, or the other things that water can do for you that we'll talk about here, like cleansing yourself. Um, you know, there are a lot of other really good uses for water besides just making sure that you don't die. Yeah. Right. Like that's, that's the basics. Um, well, and I think then too, if we talk a little bit about the, cause again, I'm just going to share some different things that pop into my head. Cause Hey, that's how we roll here. Right. That's right. That is right. Um, and, and it is, you know, it's important and, and it's not a coincidence Right. That in the last few years, people have been more uh, thinking about water, incorporating it more into into our lives because we need it. The energies are changing on this planet. Uh, you need it. You need it for cleansing. You know, we use water to cleanse ourselves on the outside, but also drinking the water cleanses on the inside as well. Yeah, all the but time. I think, yeah. And and. But I think there's some kind of practical uh, uh, things, too, to think about, because not all water is created equal. Okay. And I say that, and some of you are going to be like, what are you talking about? It's all H2O, right? That's what the, the you know, the the elemental construct is. Well, but, but, but water is not all the same, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can go, uh, you know, I've got a bird bath out here and, and we got a bunch of snow and rain the, the last little while and so my 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 um bird bath was was full it was you know, five six inches of water at least and you know i can go out there and i can look at it and the water is good for the for the birds it's fine for the birds but i look into it and that's not really water that i'm gonna want to go stick my cup down in and take a drink of <laughs> Okay, because it's kind of stagnant water. It sat there. It had a little bit of dirt in it. It's in this, you know, uh, uh, steel kind of container. So it kind of picks up probably some of the iron from the steel. And so it's a little bit brownish, orangish kind of looking, right? It's water, but it's not necessarily water that I want to necessarily go drink, mm -hmm. right? And there's a reason why I'm telling you all this, mm -hmm. okay? So bear with me. Here we go. So, so not all water is created equal. Okay. And so, you know, um, let's think about it a, a little different way too, right? Is, is, you know, I, if you've ever seen, you know, water and oil, you know, like, like, uh, you know, sometimes it'll be on the driveway or other things where maybe there's been some oil before and then, and then water kind of gets on it and it kind of separates and the oil floats on top of the water, right? Same thing. Do I want to, you know, lean down on the driveway and take a lick of that water that includes oil? Probably not, right? That's probably not the best sort of thing, right? But, but you know, if my if my water, you know, brushed up against some, you know, like like dirt is an example, right? Because sometimes you'll see this, and this is the way they used to build the old cisterns, uh, where people would collect drinking water. 
right? Is that the water comes in and usually the water's a little bit dirty, right? Because if it comes off your roof or flows, whatever, sometimes dirt gets mixed into it. But what ends up happening is that it separates, right? And so the, the, the dirt goes to the bottom and the clear water is at the top. And so you, you, you kind of see the same thing in lakes and rivers and other stuff, right? Where if you dig all the way down to the bottom, you're probably going to get some sludge in your cup. But if you take the water all the way from the top, completely different, right? And so, you know, that kind of gets me thinking too. And, and I heard this term and, and again, some of you, are, it's not going to hit you right away, but some water is alive and some water is dead, some water is alive and some water is dead or needs to be. I feel like that I've seen that movie. He needs to uh. be reactivated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so what does that mean, right? Is, well, if you think about, you know, again, not all water is created equal. So if you have a choice between, you know, using, you know, my little coffee cup here to get some water would I rather go to a pond or a small lake where the water doesn't really move and it kind of gets stagnant and sometimes you can see little stuff floating on the top of it? Would I rather dip my cup down in that and, get, and take a drink? Or would I rather dip my cup in a spring that's bubbling out of the earth or out of a river that's flowing, you know, and kind of scoop off the top? Which one would you rather drink, right? I would rather drink from the river or the spring than from the lake. They're both water. And if, if I need to, to survive, I'll drink it from the lake. Right. So, all right, Jason, what does this all have to do with anything? Right. Yeah. Well, no, Brad's, like sitting there, Brad's sitting there shaking his head. Like, what are you talking about, Jason? Cause I've been thinking a lot about water for a couple of years now. Okay. Um, and here's the difference, right? Most of the water that people drink has not moved or had any kind of life to it for quite a while. And so most of the water that people are drinking, it's no different than drinking from the lake, right? If you want to reinvigorate your water, shake it a little bit, let it run, put it in a, I've got a vortex machine that I run a lot of the water through. We get water from a spring, right? So that we know, Hey, that water literally flowed out of the mountain or out of the out of Pachamama, you know, a week or two ago, right? It hasn't been sitting in a warehouse in plastic bottles, which are made of oil for months or years, right? And so again, now, yes, there's a big push for a lot of water. A lot of people are consuming water out of plastic bottles that have been sitting there and deteriorating. And guess what? Some of that oil gets back into the water. Don't even realize it, right? Um, the, the, the water that flows out of our municipal taps, there's a lot of stuff in that. <laughs> a lot more than you would actually realize, right? So again, when I go backpacking and I'm going to uh, drink from the lake, even when I'm drinking from the river, because I don't necessarily know if there's a dead deer up up the stream from me, I'm going to filter my water, right? And so filtering the water helps to clear it of certain things. And again, you can choose to do that, not do that. It doesn't matter. You can choose to, you know, try to reactivate your water by shaking it or doing things. But here's another simple thing. And I think we brought it up here is blessing the water right? Is that water is holy. You are holy. With the intention of blessing the water, you are changing the molecular structure of that water and creating holy water. So not all water is created equal. Would you rather, you know, drink the water out of my bird bath or would you rather drink holy water that you blessed? I know which one I choose. <laughs> okay. Um, but there's a lot more to blessing the water that we'll talk about probably uh, too here in, in some of the reasons for, for that as well. But uh, 
I, I think we should probably be, make it very clear that when we talk about water being alive, we don't mean things living in the water. <laughs> Like living things mm. in the water. No, no, be careful no, no. I'm, I'm talking about the water molecules themselves. Yeah, not right, the... be careful. Like people are thinking, like, what's living and growing in my water? Like that's not what yeah. we're we're talking about um, here. But um, yeah, one point that you may, I mean, yeah, as far as different thing, kinds of water, my stuff. You know, go to the grocery store and just look at the different kinds of water that they have out there. There's spring water, there is distilled water, there is artisanal water, there is um, alkaline water. I've seen, you know, you want to get really clear, you know, you've got things like coconut waters and different things like that. Aloe water I've seen and all kinds of different things. So there are lots, you know, rose water. IPH, regular, you know, yeah. You know, rose water is a thing. Um, you know, there are lots of different kinds of water at the grocery store. It, it, just as an example of the fact that they're not all the same. Um, but I think it's really interesting is that you talk about water in a bird, you know, would you rather drink the water in a bird feeder or a lake versus water from a running, you know, from a spring or something, um, you know, and it's not that there's a sign on it that says don't drink this or drink, you know, versus this, but it's kind of something that we just know. It's just kind of we just kind of know intuitively that hey, the running water is probably better than the water that's been sitting there in that bird feeder for three days. You know, um, that the look, you know, that we see the water and can say, well, it's moving. That seems better than stagnant water where there's, you know, maybe mosquitoes flying around it or things like that. Um, or the water that we know where it's coming from versus maybe there was a deer carcass up upstream a little bit like i think we kind of intuitively know that there's differences and know which is better for us mm -hmm. you know i mean I, I i like i said i don't think i was ever taught necessarily told that water from the bird feeder was bad you know but it's just something you kind of know well and each person may be a little bit different too because even if you look at you know like a lot of the different bottled waters that are out there Right. Like you said, there's spring water, there's purified water, there's drinking water. There, some some of those terms are it's all marketing. Are marketing um, yep. But but there is a diff. The main difference between like spring water versus purified water. Purified water is supposedly filtered, but it's from a municipal water source. So somebody, mm -hmm. the factory just turned on the spigot, ran it through a filter, and put it in a bottle. Spring mm -hmm. water should be collected directly from the earth without going through um, a municipal water source. So that's one of the main differences in, in theory. But like I said, marketing, everybody has these little nuances to it. But, you know, again, it's it's like do what you feel is best, right? You want to go drink from my bird feeder? I don't care. Go ahead. Right. The birds might be kind of pissed. The but... bird bath, it, it's okay. I don't mind if that's what you want to do. It's not what I choose to do. Right. But but where I was going is I can tell the difference in taste between some of the different bottled waters mm -hmm. from the store. And some of them I like, some of them I don't like. There's just something off about certain brands of the water. But other people love the ones that I don't like. Right. So again, it's like, you know, no, no judgment one way or the other. But, but, you know, do what you feel intuitive to do. And regardless of where the source of the water comes, it's a good idea to bless and be grateful for that water. Um, because there's, there's been some um, uh, studies that have been done about water crystals. Uh, and I'm forgetting the guy's name right now. Amadu. Amatu? Uh, a Japanese scientist who actually um, they played different kinds of music. They had they they said different things like they yell angry words at uh, at water, for example, and then they'd kind of freeze it and see what the crystal structure looks like. And and totally different versus like love, you know, telling it that you love it and other things that the word actually picks up on the energy and changes its molecular structure. And so, you know, blessing or being grateful for water, whatever the source, 
makes it better and holier water than it was if you don't do that, right? And mm -hmm. so that's why, again, one of my teachers, you know, says when people ask me what the, you know, what the most, most powerful spiritual practice is, I tell them to bless the water. And they look at me funny and they don't do it. And they wonder why I'm telling him to do this. And it's like, I'm starting to, I think, finally realize and understand because it's not just the connection and the gratitude and, and the energy work that we're doing with the water, but then, you know, we're consuming it. It's becoming a part of us. If, if the water in our body is not working right, if our physical body is not working right, it's hard for all the other things to happen the way they're supposed to. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and again, so some people might be like, well, how, how do you bless the water? You say, I bless this water as you're pouring it with intention. That's all you have to say. It's not like, well, Jason, can I get the script for the prayer that I'm supposed to say? There, there, it's whatever comes. Look, to it on, look it up online on Google. I'm sure you can find a water <laughs> prayer if that's what you really need. Yeah, but, but it's what what whatever yeah. comes to your heart, and it's as simple as with intention saying, "I bless this water," and so that's what I do when I'm filling up water bottles, when I'm making coffee, when I do things. You know, I bless this water. I'm grateful for this water. That's simple. Yeah, that's simple. Yeah, you know, as you take so, a drink, I'm grateful for this water. That simple. Yeah. You're so placing attention on it at that point. So I, I want to get back to the idea of water has memory. So I want to come back to that here in a minute. Um, but when it comes to kind of, you know, why does it really matter if the water is from the bird feeder, if the bottle is from you, if it's purified from the municipal tap source, if it's from a spring or whatever like that. Um and so a lot of it is because of what's actually in that water. So now, now we're kind of talking, I think, about not the, the elemental version of it, but like what you get in a cup or in your bottle. Um, what you find in there, if you really, you know, you look under the microscopes and you really get down in there, your bottle of water isn't just elemental H2O in there. There's other stuff in there. Um, you know, when it goes through the purification processes, for instance, at the factories, they put stuff in there. Um, the municipal water sources, they dump in chlorine and they dump in um, fluoride, fluoride and, other and stuff. different different chemicals in that water. And so you are getting that into your system as well, um, which may or may not be what you want, you know, in, in your body. Um, you know, similarly, the water from the spring from the ground is going to have different minerals and things in it than what you have. If you get it, then you go and put it through a pitcher and filter it out. You know, um, a name, you know, when I grew up, we had hard water mm -hmm. you know, where it's good up. Um, and I would actually, you know, I, I, I grew up on hard water. Um, you know, that's what I, that's what I was used to all the time. And so actually when I went to college and went, you know, live in the big city where everything went through the municipal supply and was all, gunkified and you know chemicalized and things i would actually bring jugs of water from home to the dorm room to drink because i couldn't drink the the water coming from the sinks because i could taste like the chlorine funniness in it and the other stuff in it and i was used to the good old water from the you know from the well back home in mm -hmm. the ground um you know and it's different stuff in there you know additives and and everything else um and, and so if you are concerned about all the things in your water, the best thing you can do is to filter it out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, obviously, especially I think if you live where you've got municipal water because they're dumping chemicals in it. And so there, there's a lot of stuff in that you probably don't want in there, chlorines and, and fluorides and things like that in there. But even our water, like we live here in the country, we have a well. Um, when we turn the spigot straight on, the water's kind of brown that comes out. You know, so we've got a water softener system that that we run everything through before we use the water, um, and that runs it through salts and takes the stuff out. But then we further have a reverse osmosis system, mm -hmm. which then takes out a lot of the other stuff in there and makes it about as pure, I think, as you can kind of get, kind of based on the kind of technology and things like that we have um and so if you're concerned about the stuff that you've got in the water 
you know, a, a you know, a little pitcher that's at least something. But if you really want to do it, like I said, this these reverse osmosis systems are kind of the way to go to help get all that stuff. So that you're actually drinking pure water when you're doing things with it. Um so. Yeah, and I think I think that's a good point because you know what's in the water is more than just the H two and the O. Mm-hmm. It's more than just the hydrogen and oxygen molecules. And so Brad used a term called hard water. So again, just for some of those that that, that don't know what it is, no, Brad's not getting drunk on his water because it's hard liquor. But <laughs> not anymore. Hard, hard, soft yeah, water now. You know, you now you drink soft water. But but the difference. So hard water usually means the mineral content. Right. And mm-hmm. so a lot of times where, it, you know, what's considered hard just means there's more minerals in the water. Not that those minerals are necessarily bad for you, but, you know, sometimes you might see like uh, whiteness, like a little flaky kind of stuff that that, that shows up sometimes uh, or, you know, on the shower head. Right. These little white flecks and stuff like that that you have to clear off. That's the yes, minerals sir. from the water. Right. Yeah, ours was always orange from the rust iron. Oh, was it from the iron? Because you had more iron in it. So yeah, yeah. And so, so again, you can filter it all out, or you can, you know, for me, I go up into the hills and I get spring water out of the spring myself. Right. So I don't, I don't rely on somebody telling me it's spring water, and I don't really filter it out either because you know my belief is, and again, you can believe what you want to believe. But my belief is my body needs the minerals that are in the water because it's the water from where I live, right? Just like I would say, like, you know, Brad, Mm -hmm. when he was growing up, there were certain minerals that were coming out of the water in the well where you guys were at that probably is something that you need, uh, maybe different than what I need here where I live, right? And so, but again, that's my own personal preference because our body does need the minerals from water as well. And so, you know, sometimes when you do things like reverse osmosis and take everything out of it, right. Sometimes you have to remineralize a little bit and put back in some of the things that you do want to, you know, again. Yeah. Cause surprisingly enough that actually the minerals actually give it taste. You don't think about water having taste, but it actually does. Like you said, you can tell different brands have a different taste to you. Well, that's the same thing. You know, when I had the hard water, I could taste it just tasted different because I could taste a little bit of minerals in there. And when I would get it out of the faucet, when we lived in the city, I could taste the difference. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that can impact, you know, based on what's in it, how it tastes to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've talked a little bit about, you know, not all water is created equal about some of the different, Mm -hmm. you know, things to think of, you know, and again, it's like, I choose to put my water in glass bottles instead of plastic. You know, same thing that we talked about at the beginning. I'd rather have my water have contact with glass than I would have it have contact with plastic. But that's just me personally. And I've tried to reduce as much plastic out of my life in general as possible because plastic is made out of oil. And I don't want to go licking the oil off my driveway. So I don't want to be picking it up in my food or my water either. Right. That's just me. That's just me. You can do whatever you want to do. Right. But let's kind of transition a little bit too, because, uh, you know, and, and not that that isn't part of the spiritual stuff, because like we said, if you're, if, if you're properly hydrated with good water, it's going to make your spiritual work and the energy and everything else move much, much better, because that's one of the primary mechanisms of how energy flows in your body, Right. But, you know, maybe talk about some of the ways to use it also from a ritualistic standpoint or how how you can incorporate. We talked about blessing the water. That's obviously a very spiritual kind of practice. Again, only takes a few seconds. But the more you're placing awareness on and thanking and blessing the water every time you come in contact with it in whatever form it is, soup, coffee, tea, water, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, the more, you know, you're appreciating the water and the water appreciates you. And that goes back to the concept of Aini that we talked about before, right? Is as we appreciate the water and the water appreciates us. We do something for the water, the water does something for us. It's all this symbiotic relationship that makes your body better, 
right? But how else can we use water? And there's some different ways that you can even use it from a ritualistic perspective, right? There's the practical of taking a shower, washing the dishes, right? Water helps us to clean things physically, but it also helps us to clean things emotionally, energetically as well, mm -hmm. right? So if, for example, you have, let's say, you know, like a crystal that you, that you got, right? Because I know Brad's kind of shared some of the crystals that he's gotten before. Well, when you bring a crystal home, you usually want to kind of cleanse it and kind of consecrate it for a particular purpose, right? And so one of the ways that you can cleanse things, even spiritual tools, is with water. Now, some things you don't want to clean with water because it just doesn't make sense, right? To probably, you know, like try to clean a feather or something with water or, you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> but something like a crystal can be washed, right? Some of them can. Some of them can. Some of them you, you don't want to, right? right. Um, but washing using soap and water, having intention as you are cleaning it, right? That can actually, the water... Uh, actually can cleanse the energy of that particular thing. So similar with our bodies as well, right? If you if you just place a little bit of attention on it when you're taking a bath or a shower or washing your hands, I think I've talked about washing my hands mm -hmm. and washing the dishes on here on, on previous episodes. I use those what seem to be rather mundane 3D activities as an opportunity for me to uh to place attention on the spiritual side of it and actually use it as so a lot of times when i when i come home from being outside the house i will wash my hands right and so water can be used that way uh both in from a cleansing physically but also a cleansing mm -hmm. uh emotionally and uh energetically you know no different than if you were to smudge yourself with sage Yep. Right. Yeah. I was so last weekend I got, I had a cold and was kind of sick, you know, kind of hang around the house, didn't really go out and that kind of stuff. And kind of Sunday, I was like, I just feel like I just got like all this stuff weighing on me. And so I took a nice shower and I just let all that stuff kind of go. Um, released all the, the negative energy that was going on, all the funk and things, and just kind of let it all kind of flow out with the water, with the shower and felt, a hundred times better afterwards because of a lot of the stuff which just kind of went down the drain, um, you know, with the water. So it, it really does work. Yeah. Like but you have to place attention. You have to place attention correct. or awareness on it. Right. You yes. can't just get in yep. and like, Oh, well I took a shower, so it must've worked. Right. No, Brad took yep, the shower intentional thing. with the intention. Mm -hmm. And, yep. and I'm sure, you know, I don't know if you, if you're comfortable sharing a little bit more even about what was going on in your head or, what you were saying or anything or if you're not I can um, you, but... no, I, I, I mean some of it i it just my head was still kind of you know dealing with the cold so i may not even remember exactly but um again i had gotten started feeling the cold i don't know friday thursday or something like that of last week um and because of that didn't go outside um you know yeah i changed clothes but you know i didn't like regular like shower like maybe I normally would do and just kind of hung around, sat around, laid around a lot, resting, letting my body kind of do what it needed to do to heal. And then kind of Saturday, Sunday, I was like, all right, I need to get some of this stuff out of here. I need to kind of clear out a lot of the negative stuff that's going on. You know, I just kind of feel, you know, kind of when you've been sick and kind of hold up and everything, you just kind of feel kind of gunky, grungy. I don't know what a better way to say it. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to go take a shower and I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff, you know? Um, and, and I know people say, you know, you know, if you got to, you know, get a cold, take a nice hot shower and help relieve, you know, open up your sinuses and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, that was part of it. But the other part of it was just going in and again, consciously, intentionally saying, all right, I'm as the water, you know, letting the water kind of hit. You know, letting all the and just imagining in my head all of this negative stuff just kind of flowing off of me, rolling down, off down in the drain. You know, kind of going from my head and just kind of just rolling off with the water, um, and just kind of visualizing it all. You know, kind of, kind of, kind of going off, um, and it's then the the clean feeling that I would have afterwards. 
mm-hmm. know, as all that stuff has been gone off my body. And so yeah. that was kind of, no, that was well, what I went through. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for less. sharing. And that's, it's, it's actually similar to kind of what I, what I um, do as well. Right. I used to kind of bless the water and then just kind of imagine again, like that the water is just, you know, all the dark spots or dark energy mm-hmm. that I, that I feel it's just like, it's, it's dissolving it and it's running down the drain. Right. Yep. And there's no right or wrong way to do it either. You know, again, it's not like there's not some, some prescripted prayer that you can download off the internet or something. And, Oh, you must do your shower ritual this way. It's whatever you feel like, you know, it doesn't even, you know, if, if, if you take a longer shower, it only even needs to be just a few seconds. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the minute I step in the shower until the minute I get out, I must be consciously focused on this, you know, no, you know, like I said before, it's as simple as I bless this water as I'm pouring it. Yeah. Two seconds, right? That I just said, two seconds, that's it. Placed awareness, you know, thought the words in my head, uh, that's enough, right? And so, um, you know, there's a lot of power in in turning these physical things that we're doing, like washing the dishes, washing our hands, taking a shower, uh, watering the lawn. I mean, I remember, I remember one day, uh, I just got hit. Like you got to go water the lawn, and I live in Arizona, and I don't have any grass. Okay, so again, it's like you know, water the dirt. The, the, I wa- the sand. I, I, wa- I watered the dirt, right? I was cleansing. I was doing something, but I felt mm-hmm. the need to go and do that, right? And so that water was allowing me to energetically clear some things. Um, and do mm-hmm. something that I didn't even fully still don't completely fully consciously understand, but that water was helping me do something. Mm-hmm. Right. Another, another way. And we kind of, you know, on, on one of the previous episodes, we talked a little bit, Oh, I think it was with fire when we were talking about kind of ritualistic and offerings, you know, as well that, you know, if, if, you know, you have some of those practices, water, is a great thing to offer right and there Mm -hmm. and there's you know so if people might be again like i was at first like well what do you mean well you get a little shot glass okay you just fill it up with a little bit of water and you place it somewhere in your house or you know i've got two um spiritual artifacts on my desk right here one likes rum and one likes water so one has a little shot um, glass of water and the other one has a little shot glass of rum, right? Because they prefer different things, right? Just like we all prefer different things. Um, but water is, you know, again, whether you're using the water maybe to clean a crystal, right? That's a, that's a way of offering water to that crystal as mm-hmm. well. Uh, but you can also offer, like I said, in, in a little shot glass, you know, you set it out for up to a week, however long you feel like it needs to be there. Um, but you'll be mm-hmm. surprised at um, when done with the right intention, the volume in that glass will go down much quicker than evaporation. So, mm. mm-hmm. yeah, no, I actually, so um, I don't, I think we probably talked about, we talked about fire um, about I've kind of have all the different elements represented here in my office, um, kind of in my 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 altars kind of space. You know, fire I've got through light. I've got a picture of a um, a volcano erupting, um, which my daughter and wife actually painted and gave to me for Christmas last year. Um, I sometimes like candles, you know, or like the incense, the the fire component of the incense. But I also have water. I have a little bowl of water. And for those of you on YouTube, you probably may be able to see the little bowl over here behind my shoulder. It's a little bowl. I just put a little bit of water in it. Um, and like you said, I kind of bless it, put some intention on it, and let it sit out there. Mm-hmm. Um, again, so that I have some water f- you know, physically present here um, in, my, in my office. So that I've got those, those elements um, kind of represented um, here. Um I had something else I was going to say too, and now I totally can't think of what it is because I got totally on the, the track of of that. Um, 
but no, that's a, that's like I said, it's another way of um, incorporating water into mm. into some of those things from an offering perspective. And and like I said, you you don't. I I had no idea. I didn't even mm-hmm. think about that. But you know, I was I was told one time because again, I was asking my 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 mentor. You know, well, well, you know, how do I, how do I have Aini with this, with this artifact? You know, what is, what, what did they like? And he kind of turns at me and he says, they all like water <laughs> and just kind of left it at that. <laughs> and I'm like, they, they always, you know, they always ask for water. They always ask for water. And it took me again a while to mm-hmm. kind of let that sink in and realize what that actually meant. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. you know, again, if you're doing offerings, we talked a little bit about that, I think, on the fire episode. Isn't that where that came up? About I don't even remember. But yeah, it could have been. If you want to provide offerings, some very simple, easy things, a little shot glass of water, shot glass of rum. Both of those are accepted by most most of the beings. They like one or the other of those, and there's lots of other endless. As do pirates, do. by the way. Are are right. Um, no, we've and I've we actually. So when I go for my hikes, the places around here that I tend to go are nature preserves, and because of that, you can't take. You're supposed to take stuff in and take things out and disturb nature, you know. So it's kind of hard if I want to give an offering, you know, to thank nature for the things it has done for me, to be able to be grateful for, for the you know, inspirations or whatever I might get when I'm out there. If I want to be given an offering, it's tough to like take other things out there. And maybe we'll talk about some of those other type of offerings later. You know, when it comes to offering um, tobaccos and different things like that. But you really shouldn't be doing that some a lot of that kind of stuff because of the sensitivity of the nature preserve, right? So what I do instead is I take my water bottle that I use when I took a hike and I open her up and you know give a couple you know uh, words of of blessing and of gratitude and I dump a little pour a little bit of water out in the ground, you know, or maybe on a rock or someplace like that as a way to give offering of water. Um in a place like that where, you know, that's very limited on the kind of stuff that I can do. Um, again, like I said, it's a great way to, to give an offering to show gratitude um, mm-hmm. through the water. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's funny because, you know, I, I think a lot of times it's, it's holy water going in, it's holier water coming out. Okay. <laughs> So holy water coming in, holier water going out. Now, when I say that, a lot of people are going to chuckle just like Brad did. And they're like, no, urine is disgusting. Well, let me tell you something, right? I have a dog now. And um, what do dogs do? They pee, right? They pee on bushes. They pee on trees. And I've had, you know, what I, I didn't even realize that they were rosemary bushes, three rosemary bushes in my front yard. They were looking pretty sad till the dog comes along. And now he likes to pee on them every so often. And they are the greenest, luscious looking things uh, <laughs> that you, that you could imagine. Right. And so again, it's like, um, yeah, giving water back to the earth, whether it's from our water bottle or from our human bottle mm-hmm. uh, is also a, uh a great offering to give as well. And I know culturally it's not, uh, it's not kosher, (laughs) but, but there is, there is some beauty in it, in it as well. And again, if you think about, you know, for example, like with Brad going out with his water bottle, he's taking his water bottle on his hike because he needs water, right? Mm -hmm. Without water, he gets dehydrated. He doesn't feel well. I know that the couple of times that I forgot to take a water bottle when I went out on what I thought was a little hike, I was not (laughs) doing so well by the time I got back because I was so Mm -hmm. dehydrated and kind of woo, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So the fact that he is sacrificing or offering a portion of what he took for himself, right, as, as a way to give back is is beautiful even though you know some of you might think oh it's just splashing a little bit of water it's not just splashing a little bit of water 
if your intention is different, mm -hmm. right? And if your intention is there, if the blessing is there, if the respect is there, if the intention is there, you're not just splashing a little bit of water. And, and that plant or Pachamama recognizes and sees your offering and your sacrifice to them and will reciprocate, right? Um, because that's how it works. That's the connectedness of, of all of us and everything that's kind of going on. And again, maybe we'll talk more about, you know, some different offerings and things like that in the future. But since we're talking about water, I thought it was important to bring up that, hey, you know, it can be as simple as just putting out mm -hmm. a little glass of water, a little shot glass or a little glass, whatever you have, um, yep. or even just pouring a little bit on the ground or wherever you happen to be. Yep. So we tease people a little bit about the idea that water has memory, but I think we're running to the end of our time here. And so that, I don't that know. water water memory is going to be a, a longer episode by itself. So yeah, yeah. That's probably, so I don't know. That's if we're probably be one to... we have to do. Yeah, so, you guys are going to have to come back because because Brad's going to remind me, and we're going to talk about water and memory. Uh, it is on the list in of future episodes. Things. Yeah. Uh, so we will make sure at some point we will go and we'll talk about the fact that water has memory, mm -hmm. which means you guys have to tune in next time because you never know when it's going to come up. <laughs> it might be next week. It might be in two weeks. It may be in two months, but you'll never know until you tune in. So if you have not already done so, please go and subscribe in your favorite podcast player or in YouTube so that you will be the first person of all your friends to know when we talk about the fact that water has memory. Yeah. Well, and just along kind of those lines of, of, you know, Aini and offering that, you know, again, if you are, if you're finding listening to us two crazy guys of value, if, if it's resonating with you, please share it with other people. Cause again, we're not, we're just doing this to help people share our own experiences. If you think it'll help other people, then please share. If you don't, then don't share, you know, I mean, it's up to you. But, um, you know, our whole purpose is just to allow people the opportunity to hear things from a different perspective, to really focus more on the basics mm -hmm. and the true intent behind a lot of the things. Because, you know, we know there's a lot of people out there preaching things that they have no idea about because they're not doing them themselves. They're mm -hmm. just reading it in a book. Or they're trying to take money from people by telling them to do things. And that's not what our intention is. So, so yeah, if you found it helpful, please share with other people. Um, if you want to let us know what you're liking, that's great too. But again, you don't have yeah. to do it. Don't do yeah. it. It doesn't matter. But and if um, there's things you want us to talk about that you, you, you know, you think would be a great thing to, to discuss on here, let us know that too. Yeah. Um, you know, again, we want this to be something that you find beneficial as the listener or as the watcher. Um, and if there's a topic that we've maybe talked about, maybe we've teased, but haven't really gone into, uh, something you want to go and make a deeper dive in, maybe we just kind of hit the highlights, but you're like, Hey, I want more details about that. Let us know. Um, and we'll, we'll see what we can do for you. All right. Sounds good. All right, everybody. So keep listening. We'll catch you next time, guys. All right. See ya.